What's up guys? You know the drill for this video, right? Of course you do. It's the sixth one of these videos and they're always absolutely amazing. And if you're not already subscribed to this channel, liking the videos, commenting, letting people know these videos are amazing, that I don't know what you're doing, by the way. You're actually just messing up. Just saying. But with that said, let's get into this. So Diddy Khan. Now this character is simple. You pick up banana, you hold shield, you toss banana out of shield, you combo, and you win, GG. Right? Easy. Very easy. All right, but actually, I'm not, I'm not lying with this one. That sounds like a joke. And it kind of is, but also it's kind of the truth. But the real advice is for this character, besides just how good Banana is, like, as an out of show tool and how much just running back and forth and doing, like, this and throwing Banana is, is you should be actively looking to catch your Banana and pull it out whenever you can. Like, when you throw a Banana at someone's shield, instead of just, like, letting it hit their shield and do nothing, be ready to chase after it. Like, oh, hit their shield. Be like, all right, hit the shield. I'm gonna catch it with like picking it up. Like, like try to actively pick it up so you can reuse it for pressure when you can if it hits the shield, if it whiffs. Just be, be ready to not let your opponent get banana because your opponent getting Diddy Kong's banana is atrocious for Diddy Kong. And also try to get banana as often as possible. I know it sounds simple, but you know, if you're hitting someone getting a combo on them, you knock them away from you and you can't quite get like a follow up, Go for a banana pull, right? Someone's a neutral, just, you know, throwing things at you, giving you some space, get a banana. Like, make sure the threat of pulling a banana is always on your opponent's mind and always be looking for openings to get that. Because that's what makes Diddy Kong a character. And you make the opponent play his game if he's, if you're constantly threatening that. I'm not gonna lie, guys, this character is so rare that I almost skipped over him in the character select like, screen and went, went right to Sonic. And then I'm like, wait, something's off here. But with that said, Lucas, so one thing people don't really value about Lucas is his air mobility is absolutely absurd. Like just his general air stats, like he's really good drift, good air speed. I don't think his air speed's absurd, but it's good. His acceleration's nice. Cause you know, he's a PK boy, right? Like Ness. But because he has these really nice spacing tools with forward air, side B, you can use double jump as well to kind of mess with his air momentum and like make it hard to keep up with him. So between all these things, he's an absolute monster. Like controlling the airspace horizontally and you should be exploiting that heavily by constantly drifting around making your movement hard to read mixing up like when using down bees and double jumps and really just kind of like almost being in and out of your opponent's range where the opponent's like, guess okay is Luca's gonna pressure me with a nair is he gonna fare me or is he gonna back off and side B again for the boom time I've heard of PK fires in my life I swear Ugh. but yeah so Lucas players, just, just, just be more mobile in the air, please. Or don't be and save us all from suffering. Something I see a lot for Sonic players is, uh, for some reason, like the Elite Smash Sonic player loves, and I mean loves, homing attack. They see this move and go, oh, it homes in the opponent, I don't have the space, and I can mix the timing, amazing move. And it could be a good move as a combo in there, it has uses for sure, it can poke low shields, you do a mix up with every now and then, it's good for edge guarding, but the amount of times I see a Sonic player just say, you know what, I'm going to pick Sonic, I'm just going to homing attack. And I'm just like, but they're neutral. But they, they roll or they spot dodge, you you whip the move, and suddenly you're a billion frames of lag, you punished. It's insane. Don't rely, if you're a new Sonic player, just don't rely on this move. Trust me. And especially for edge guarding when people off stage, a mistake I constantly see Sonic players do is they go off stage and try to edge guard with this, and they die. Or they try to recover by hitting the opponent with it, and they, the opponent air dodges, and they die. And there's some ways to outplay this move, but they just get absolutely, like, destroyed. And, while I was making this, I thought of another piece of advice for Sonic players. And this one's gonna be a lot simpler. When you're doing these side Bs and down Bs, try to mix and dash in close to your opponent before doing them, because this right here, it's... Even online, it's kind of reactable. It's not gonna hit someone, it's gonna be annoying because you're Sonic. Be left open versus projectiles. Um, like long range moves. There's a lot of things that can beat this and this doesn't really do too much But like if you like dash up a lot and do like this and like get close and spin dash and then like dash back and do like this and Just by mixing up the spacing of your spin dash It's so hard to deal with it because there's so many like ways you can make it unreactable It sounds simple, but you really notice the effect when you're playing of just like Constantly using your movement on the ground to choose where you spin dash from in unpredictable ways, especially online Screw Sonic Online. So, not only is Dedede one of the heaviest characters in the game, I think he's maybe like the heaviest, he's close to it, right? He's very hard to kill. He has multiple jumps, 
And he's kind of hard to combo due to like his kind of floaty nature. So as a result, I feel like this is a character that you can take more risks with than any other character. And like when I, when I see DD players kind of playing a little bit afraid, courting themselves, not willing to take risks and go for reads, especially when they have like kind of stage control, even just here where they're mid stage and like one hit can knock the opponent to the ledge. I kind of look at that and go, Ugh, I think they're messing up. There's so many ways you can put people off stage at the ledge and get your insane ledge trap going. If you just want to take some risks, you know, like want to mix up like spacing some aerials, punishing getting punished versus just running at someone grabbing or down tilting. Or even landing. I normally say when landing, you don't want to take too many risks. You want to get back to neutral or whatever. But he's so heavy and he has like kind of annoying landing mix ups because of his multi jump and fastball and air being a solid tool along with like spaced forward air and side B that even disadvantage, you can take a lot of risks with this character more than you'd think and kind of rely either on the opponent just messing up or them just guessing wrong. Exploit how deadly his advantage state is with ledge trapping and how much like you can knock people off to the ledge and ledge trap them so easily off basically anything mid stage. Sup, so, my actually cool. Awesome, amazing elf players. It is time for some Galaxy Brain Pikmin management advice. First piece of advice, get your purple out right away. Just, that's it. No matter what you're doing, your goal at the start of every match is getting your purple Pikmin out right away. Your other Pikmin don't matter. Something I tend to do is I tend to try and throw my red Pikmin at my opponent, use my yellow for like an attack or something and throw my blue right away. That way my opponent's forced to most likely kill the blue and red Pikmin, which if you do that, you get what I think is the best single purple lineup in the game for general purposes. Yellow, white, purple. Yellow Pikmin for the amazing spacing tool with the bigger hitboxes, combo potential, just everything, because there's like extra hit stun, hit lag range. White Pikmin, because white Pikmin side B is dumb, a little grab range. And that purple Pikmin, because it is a broken projectile. It gives you like a top five projectile on the game, but also gives you Ganondorf powered aerials on like Roy, like Krom sized attacks with insane like Mario frame data. That, this is your, your ideal lineup early on, it's pretty easy to get. If you just recognize, you need to pluck two Pikmin at the start of a match to get it. And at this point, once you have two Pikmin, I tend to just dump every Pikmin that isn't purple, because I want to get double purple as soon as possible, because purple is valuable. You always want to kind of play along like with your purples, like pressure with your purples. If you're camping with purple toss, like be ready to like make sure people can't get past it, make sure to protect your purples, right? Your goal is protecting that. While cycling out everything that isn't that purple, unless someone's like, you know, kill percentage from blue up throw in that case, try to keep that. Until you can get this lineup. For something like this, we have double purple. Because double purple Pikmin lineup is when Olimar is the top tier. Even me, who says this character's like a mid tier. When he has this lineup, ah, he's, he's dummy good. Your pressure, your damage, your everything is insane. And the last little trick when you have two purples, don't stop there. Try to set yourself up so when you respawn, or you lose the purples or whatever, you can pluck another purple immediately. So a lot of times I get this lineup, and then I just dump Pikmin when I can. Like sometimes I just actively dump Pikmin away when I have double purple. Because I'm trying to set up so if I die, like say I, have, I pull a yellow, right? When I respawn, I immediately get blue at purple. You respawn with purple immediately, it's so hard for the opponent to deal with. Now, if for some reason you're playing Lucario, I don't, I don't know why you play this character. He's not good or anything, but if you're playing him for some reason, my piece of advice is early on, you want to be very aggressive against your opponent and try to force trades and stuff because this character doesn't have much damage output that early. His camping isn't that strong. Like, he's not a good character when he's low percent, right? But you want to make sure when you get like punted to mid percent and you aura really activates, you're in a good spot. So if you're losing neutral like mid stage, a lot of times you still got some stage to work with. Where if you like being more campy and passive, you get lose neutral early. You might go off stage getting edge guard before you have like a big recovery from your aura. You might get your aura and be like at the ledge, you might just die early. And there's so many things that go wrong when you're like off stage and in the corner, which is gonna happen for more passive runaway based play. And there's a bonus, when you're playing this very aggressive play style early and they kind of making it more passive and spacing based, as you get to percent where aura activates, what happens is that your opponent is so used to the aggressive play style that the passive play style is gonna throw them off. So you have time to make these reads and adjustments versus your opponent. Meanwhile, they're like, wait, he was being aggressive and running at my face. Now he's camping Aura Sphere. Uh, this is weird. So it's a really, 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 really just simple game plan to execute that's very effective. All right, guys, so you know the drill at this point. If you're not already following, subscribing, all that stuff, what are you doing? Let me know in the comments below which characters you're most excited to see 
for these uh these videos coming out. This is it everyone, peace out and see you next week.